So how long are you down? How long are you down here for? Oh, we're here till um, for a couple of weeks, at least. House ready for the McConaughey's or? Yes, we're trying to get the house. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> the things we need to get moved out, moved out. Um, it's kind of it's kind of hard. <laughs> Imagine. I, I seem to have lost the picture somewhere. Oh, well, I see you. Mm. Well, I was pulling for Iowa yesterday. Uh, how did they do? They lost. Just when yeah. it looked like they were going to have it won. <laughs> well, it, it saves me a lot of, well, not a lot, a little stress if I don't even think about those things. <laughs> I see they're getting a new house built in your front yard. Yeah, that's our house. Mm -hmm. are, are they the ones living in the little house now? Um, uh, her husband is. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> she's living with, she and the three kids are living with her parents on the hill. Okay. And then her husband and the dog and the fish and the turtle are living in the little house and that's where most of their furniture is stored. Okay. Uh, what's their estimated completion date on that house? It was supposed to be uh, January. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, this, uh, this constant rain makes it hard to farm and hard to build houses and hard to build roads. A lot of nice weather for the framing, but they couldn't get the the concrete people in on time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it sat as a big basement for mm -hmm. four weeks. Oh no! And so the framers just showed up uh, the on uh, Christmas Eve day and started uh, putting the putting stuff in. So they've got a lot done in the last week, but they've been a little frustrated because they were supposed to be in by January. Yeah. Wow. It's going to be more like May. Well, we, we certainly have had some warm weather, but uh, a day like yesterday wasn't very conducive for working. But just down beyond Sylvia's, there's a cornfield that isn't finished yet, and a combine sitting out there. And, and my goodness, he's going to have to wait till it freezes up. I saw that sitting I'm, there when we went for a ride the other day. I'm interested to hear that, Dan, because we were out that way a week or so ago, and it was there. So I didn't know whether he'd finished yet or not, but obviously I, not. I, I don't think he's moved. It looks like he's dumped a truckload of gravel on the edge of the field so he can get his trucks in to haul it out. Yeah. Uh, but hasn't been able to even do that. Wow. Hi, Dave Mills. Good morning. Bert, were you talking about somewhere around Mooresville or Iowa? Just west of Sylvia's house. Oh, oh. oh. The, the neighboring community there, the neighboring farm. Yeah, it's actually sort of an extension of the field that's around her house. We're clear at the west end of it. There's quite a bit of corn to pick with a combine sitting there in the mud. Yeah, at the bend in the road. Mm -hmm. at, at least it's not so full of weeds you can drive out on it. The last few years, you can drive out on the weeds. <laughs> It, it was pretty clean this year. Okay. 
Is it uh, drying out a little bit? Is it soft draining for a while around there? Rained all day yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> oh, guess not then. <laughs> Our driveway is full of poor little earthworms that have drowned because uh, the <laughs> ground is so wet. Well, now, Dan, maybe you could offer him a, a low price as long as you haul it out of there to solve your combine issue for next year. Yeah, <laughs> could be. <laughs> I guess you, you guys are still at the Sylvia's house? Yeah, we're here for a couple of weeks yet. Okay, okay, good. That's it. <clears throat> Trying to get ready for the McConaughey's. No more progress than we made yesterday. We'll be six months at that, at that job. <laughs> what, were, what were you trying to do to get ready for them? Oh, <clears throat> we got to clean the office out and, and uh, move those books behind you. No, I think they're going to stay. Okay. <laughs> uh, mostly, you know, cleaning the garage out enough to get a couple cars in and the. <clears throat> Getting the office all emptied out, the, <clears throat> and the bedrooms empty, and you know, just uh, closets and dressers. Mm -hmm. Hard, hard decisions. <laughs> okay. So some of it's going to to the charities, and some of it's going to Iowa. Uh, Eric took a bunch of electronics with him, and I think uh, Jay took some things. Uh, I hope there's not much going to Iowa. I already have a house full. <laughs> morning. Hi. Good morning. I have a hard drive issue on my real com desktop computer. I had to go to the repair shop. So I'm resurrected my laptop for the first time in at least once. Oh, getting it going this morning, so it looks a little different. I'm still trying to figure out how to get the shadows out of it and so forth. It looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks fine. Oh, Lynn and Steve, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Lynn and Steve are still married. Well, now we just spend time together. That's that's all. <laughs> We show up together every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> what are you doing, Nancy? <laughs> Everybody have a good New Year's? So far. Nancy worked on a jigsaw puzzle yesterday. <laughs> uh, birds. Yeah. Texted Dale. Thought so. I might have been check size up. He's on the way right now. To check, check what? Sidewalk at the church. <laughs> oh, is there snow out in Iowa, Dale Doral? Uh, we can't hear you. <laughs> Said, yes, pretty much snowed in. Mm. So not. <clears throat> I don't know that the snow is so deep, it's just blown around in, in big piles. Mm. Oh. <clears throat> Drifted. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Hey, Chipper. Morning. Hi, Chip. Good morning. The cat stole one of my plugs. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice background you have there, Chip. Thank you. My kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's lovely. Everybody have a happy Christmas and a new year. 
We did. Um, if we didn't, would we say anything? <laughs> <laughs> Humbug. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Okay. We didn't get very much snow here, but we got enough on one of our trees that was weak that it fell down. <laughs> Oh no, I noticed this morning <laughs> looking out in the backyard. It's just one of the thin ones. It probably been dead for a long time, but fell out of the woods. Either that Good or the morning, all. took it down. Hey, Dan Berger. Oh. <clears throat> How's How things? Feeling? I'm feeling okay. It's hard to divide the uh, effects of the infusion from the effects of the drugs given before the infusion, which is supposed to mitigate the effects of the infusion. So <laughs> I have more uh, reaction to the Benadryl and the dexamethasone and the, and the Tylenol. No. But then I've had a, a runny sinus going through tissues like a house of fire. So something new every day. Are you having Otherwise, visitors? I'm Come Are in. you having visitors? Yes. Yes. Yeah, the kids were over. Uh, let's see. I was in Tuesday and out Wednesday. They were over Wednesday afternoon, evening. We went out to eat and then we had Christmas, birthday, all that put together a well, got out a thousand piece puzzle, put together about eight hundred pieces, and they uh, went their separate ways for New Year's. Uh, Nick's still in town; he'll be driving back to Denver on uh, Tuesday. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, people can come visit. Good. Because we're around for the next couple of weeks, we may do that. Okay. Or you come here. Well, you know, back door's rarely locked. So. Oops. <laughs> I gave away my security secret. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Kristen will be starting on a, about 13 weeks of travel to 13 different facilities starting Monday, I think, to uh, implement a new uh, you know, cash preservation program, cash use program for the company she works for. She found out when she went out to Long Island that there's just so many different ways that all the different facilities are doing things that they were leaking money. So she and a, I think the VP of operations got together and figured out a standardized way to keep from doing that. Um, and she says it's been very interesting because she's got a foot in both camps. She uh, has to deal with the VPs and the C-suite and all those people. And then she has to deal with tow truck drivers too. And that's kind of the other end of the spectrum of, of uh, society. Mm -hmm. But she's, yeah. she's felt what comfortable. Coming in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Interestingly enough, the tow truck drivers are the face of the company. <laughs> yep. And so they are, uh, in many ways, the most important part of the operation. As you either make or break your customer relations with the, your experience with the tow truck, show, tow truck drivers, much like the co-op is, depending on the guy that comes out and sprays your field. Uh, yep. Versus yep. the CEO of the company. <clears throat> well, these drivers are all uh, contractors and they uh, show up at junkyards, of course, which are 
I don't know if you've all been to a junkyard, but they can be kind of fun and exciting. <laughs> but they're very grimy and gritty, and people are quite often the same. <laughs> Morning, Norm. Norm is still connecting to the audio. Oh, that is Norm. When I was on the board bank uh, of directors, I was always interested to realize that the lowest paid people in the company, the tellers, were the ones that dealt with the customers uh, on a face-to-face -face basis. And probably they should have been paid more than the bank president. They had more of an effect on the success or failure on a day-to-day -day basis of the company Good than point. the president did. Did you make that suggestion to the bank president? <laughs> Two or three times. It didn't go very far, though. <laughs> well, then I heard a day or two ago this Dr. Fauci, is that his name? Makes $430,000 a year and the president of the United States, 400,000. <laughs> of course he has been in his job, but I think he's served either nine or 11 presidents. Most of our presidents, if they're lucky, get eight years and some of them four. Depends on who's, you know, what your perspective is. <laughs> Well, it is time to uh, begin worship. Are there joys or uh, concerns to share this morning as we gather? That was certainly a joy for us to be with our children, um, three of the four, <laughs> and their families over the holidays. Um, when they live so far away and you miss all those day day by day uh, celebrations and difficulties, you lose touch sometimes. And so it was just great to have them here and interacting and having a great time with each other. So yeah, family's great. Uh, same with us, we had our two daughters and two grandsons with us and did a number of activities. They went, <laughs> ice, they went ice skating it's no, no longer called the Coliseum. And they went to the Newfields and go Rune art exhibit. And they even went to a Pacers basketball game, which was rather expensive. <laughs> I didn't have to pay for that one. And we went to the zoo, which was very nice too. So we kept very busy and that was a good thing too. <clears throat> Mother's birthday was New Year's Eve, and so the family all went to Los Patios to celebrate. We always do, and I've got a picture of her in her Mexican hat and her margarita, and we took that, and fortunately, somebody was having a birthday there, too, so we all got to sing happy birthday to Grandma Dorothy and not look silly singing <laughs> to a picture. <laughs> Ask it, you continue uh, to hold Mike and his family in prayers. We had his uh, mother's service on Wednesday, and uh, he's uh, doing pretty well, but his sister's still in rehab, so she wasn't able to be there, which was sad for him as well. Uh, So he's taught, his dad died in December uh, 32 years ago, and then his mother you know, passed away just before Christmas. So 
uh, the holidays were especially tough on him this year. And you know that Aunt Marsha passed away on Christmas Day, early in the morning. And um, many of you who have her artwork can keep her memory strong in your home. She was a, a cheerful, light hearted, beautiful woman. I know a lot of you know Pat Andrews and her father passed away Christmas morning. Hold these uh, prayer concerns and uh, the joys and the sorrows both in our hearts as we center into silence. I'm the worship leader, so we'll speak. Uh, as I feel led out of the silence, <coughs> you could please put yourself on mute during this time to help feedback issues, then uh, unmute when you feel led. And we will end the, as we have the program time right at 10 and uh, continue with unprogrammed worship for those who can stay. And then at 1035, though there's a separate link, we'll do uh, Sunday school. So women of the Bible continue then at 1035. I was uh, thinking about a uh, scripture lesson for the first Sunday of the new year. One that kept coming to me was from Psalm 119, verse 105. Uh, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Um, that was uh, one of my favorite verses as a kid when we used to do Bible memorization and win prizes for how many verses we can memorize because for one it was short wasn't as short as John eleven thirty five. 35 Jesus wept but it was still uh, brief uh, but it seemed uh, seems appropriate as I think about um, beginning a new year a light for my path And I also read this, this poem by Julie Cadwallader Staub called Be Not Afraid, which the title appealed to me as we move into a new uncertain year. <clears throat> I am converted in every day when the clouds dream a new dream and fill the air with snow, 
when the pines and the hemlocks lift their needles and welcome what sun there is, when the creek hard frozen listens as the fox trots along its side, this world of enchantment waits for you like the milkweed standing in the snowy field, its pod open wide like angel wings outstretched, ready to catch the rising wind. I read that uh, poem just after Nancy and I had been out and about in our uh, one of our rides the other day. We hadn't done that for a while, but it was nice and warm. And so we ventured out through the, the wood trails and through the prairie. Uh, the creek obviously around here is not frozen, uh, nor is the prairie particularly snowy, although there was a dusting today. But I did see uh, milkweed with their pods open and wonder where those uh, seeds had all blown uh, on the wind, especially after I read uh, Julie's poem. It was a good way to start this new year for me, um, to be out and about around this space that I've called home for the longest uh, I've ever lived anywhere in any one house. Um, and to think about this new year and the sights I'll see and allow myself, as Julie says, to be converted every day. Uh, it seems to be a good idea, I think. Um, as uh, I think about this new year, How do I approach it? Um, there was uh, Lisa, our daughter was joking the other day. She didn't want 2022 because that sounded like a repeat of uh, 2020, 2022. And she didn't want to go through 2020 again with all the Omicron and or all the Delta and all those sorts of things. Um, and that seems to to be for me as well. What's do I do I begin to wonder and embrace, uh, or uh, do I fear? What's ahead? I have no idea what's ahead. Uh, we thought we did last year. We thought we did the year before. Uh, how do we move forward uh, with hope? And yet, I think if I've learned anything, and I, at times I don't feel like I've learned as much as I should about what it means to be a faithful follower of Jesus, is that Faith says to move forward with hope. To trust in the, the living word of God, to trust in Christ, my inward teacher, and to let him be a light into my path, as the King James Version says. To realize that as the psalmist also says that from age to age, the faithful have placed their trust in God and found God to be trustworthy and true. And so to look forward while also looking well back into the history of faith that I have and the saints that have been before and found that this is a good way in which to walk to let the Lord be a light unto my path. A light into my feet. My guide in a, in this way ahead that 
I don't need to see the whole path. I just need to see that part in front of me, enough light. The other night, Nancy called to me and said, there's somebody walking down the hill in the dark and they have a flashlight. And, and so I went and looked and sure enough, there was somebody, I wasn't too worried about who it might be. And the next morning uh, we were talking it, to Michael who was out for hit one of his walks through the woods. And I, I asked him, was that you? And he said, yeah, I took a flashlight so I'd have just enough light to see, just enough light. It's all he needed in the dark. And I need to remember that, that the Lord gives me just enough light that I need for this day. Because there's a poem by my friend Paul Willis says, no one knows where this trail goes. No signs at the trailhead, list the miles. The, desina the destinations, and yet the path appears at your feet, disappears between the trees, an invisible door. Once you set out on this slender way, do not look back for the trail will have vanished behind you. No one else can come this far. The path is for your feet only. What will this path be? And will I trust that God's word will light my way?
move into an extended period of unprogrammed worship and uh, blessings on friends who need to leave for other engagements. Uh, let's continue in worship uh, throughout our days, whether we're here uh, in silent worship or in stillness in our hearts.
If all hearts are clear, we'll conclude a meeting for worship. Are there any closing thoughts that friends have before we we end? I guess this is an announcement that I should have made earlier, but I didn't think of it at the time. Sylvia, I don't know whether you're planning on being around uh, long enough for USFW or not, but after I did the newsletter, we decided not to have it for the same reasons that we're not meeting in person for a meeting for worship. So I don't know whether that figures into your plans at all or not, but I thought I better let you know. And Brent, did you send out the newsletter? I'm not sure I got the emailed copy. No, I forgot. I'll send it out today. No problem. I just didn't remember getting the, the email, so that's fine. Happy birthday tomorrow, Chip, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Brent, I enjoyed your message. I'm thinking about that lot. Happy birthday, Chip. Thank you. I appreciated your message, too. Thank you. Include worship and then for those who can please uh, rejoin us at 1035 for women of the bible uh, this is the mother of the the children who were the mothers of the children who were slaughtered by herod is what we're looking at today as part of the uh yeah happy christmas story so we'll see you all later